Good morning. In this video, we want to deal with the issue of salvation and the simplicity of salvation. I put up a video uh, previously on Pastor Lawson and uh, his movement for Lordship Salvation. Repentance of sins, emotion, why are people sinning in churches, you must not be saved. So let me read this. Uh, this is from uh, Salvation, God's Marvelous Work of Grace from uh, Lewis Berry Chafer. Preaching the gospel. It is sometimes it is sometimes supposed that the preach God the pre preach Christian living is preaching the gospel. That's fine, then he's telling you preaching has got you know change life. Sinners are thus told to walk in the light, to pray, fine, down good, to study the Bible, to make confession of sin, or to repent. That's past loss. On the contrary, they have no light in which to walk, no access to God in prayer. No understanding of the scriptures apart from the message of saving grace, which the Spirit will use for their salvation, to their salvation. There are no grounds of relationship before God where confession could be of any avail. Confession comes after you say, 1 John 1 9. They are already condemned. They cannot change their own mind or repent. They can't change their mind. Their mind is set. They need to believe. They're told to believe. They can believe on Christ by the Spirit, and such believing includes that change of mind or repentance which is possible to the unsaved. God illuminates the Holy Spirit, your free will comes in, and that's when you make a decision. Now you see the issue. Now you see the issue. You're dead in sins, you're hopeless, in a helpless condition. There's one way out, the Savior, that's good news. Jesus Christ is that Savior, and you believe on Him. That and the issue is eternity, not time. How you live your life, you want a better life, any of that. The issue the Holy Spirit's making too clear to you are two options. You're either going to heaven or going to hell. That's it. Make your choice. They stand confronted with the revelation concerning the Savior who waits to save, to save. He is to be believed upon. Other issues can serve only to postpone the day of salvation. Encouraging men to believe that God will be merciful is not preaching the gospel. While such preaching really ignores the cross. Salvation is not a present act of genu generosity or and leniency on the part of God. Salvation is possible because the love of God has already provided all that a sinner can ever need. It's history. It's already been done. The sinner is not saved by pleading with God for his kindness. That's uh, be merciful, uh, God, you know, to be a sinner. That, that's, that's, that was for a person in the temple asking him to right, get in right, right relationship with God, not a, a lost person. Um, he is saved by believing that God has uh, has been kind. That's why you don't ask to be saved. You don't ask to be saved because God has already provided the gift. You don't ask to be saved for what God has already provided. Such is the exact place of the cross in the message of the gospel. Preaching the cross is telling men something about Christ and his finished work for them, which they are to believe. This is the simplest test to be applied to all soul-saving soul appeals. The gospel has not been preached until a personal message concerning a crucified and living Savior has been presented in a form which calls for the response of a personal faith. The Savior said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me have, hath everlasting life. Now that's just that simple. It's just that simple. You present the gospel, you present the issue, heaven and hell, you present the issue that the individual is lost and is on his way to hell without believing the gospel, and that the gospel is that Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross. Your sins on the cross, personal sins, personally, took your place on the cross, rose again from the dead. And trusting in him and what he did for you on the cross is the only way for salvation. Is that simple enough? What these guys don't like is you know, the idea is you're telling people in their way, we well, need emotional enough. We need to do this. Now, now repeat after me now. Okay, you believe that. But now, let's make sure you got everything right in your mind. Let me say this prayer now. Here's this prayer. If you say this, uh, you know, you can really be sure you All works. Anything you add to the simplicity of the gospel is a work. Why? Because you add flesh to it. 
That's just simple. That's simple. You've added something God doesn't want in there. And the fact of the matter is, you have one decision to make. A lost person has one decision you can make. The Holy Spirit is standing in, illuminating the issue of the gospel. And what, what the issue is. He's a lost sinner, and he needs to be saved. When he believes, he has repented. He has changed his mind. He has made a decision to reject his dead works, reject his anything, his religion, his past, anything that would have stopped him from believing on Jesus Christ. He rejects them. That's what believing means. He's rejected. He's turned, he's turned away from his unbelief to his belief. And whatever that unbelief consisted of, why he was not believing, he was rejected. It's not his personal sins. His personal sins are proof that he needs a Savior. So, again, it's a simple work. So salvation is that simple. All these guys that are telling you repentance has to be part of it, because they're trying to get emotion in there. They ignore the fact that uh, an act, uh, in Romans 2, it says goodness of God leads repentance. They just they always they want to get in there, because they had that experience. They had the weeping. They had the, and for whatever reason, they, oh, I whipped him when I did, so, you know, you know, he might have. I don't doubt that. But it had to do with salvation. God didn't care about your emotions. Emotions are not the criteria of salvation. Faith is. That's the only criteria. And the works crowd, the faith plus something, hate that. They've always got to put something in there. A changed life, you know. If you're not, you know, you should, you know, you have to come to God and ask God to save you. You got to, uh, you know, call upon the name of the Lord to save you. You got to want to change. You have to want to change your life and come, oh God, please forgive me. Blah blah blah. Please God, this, that, and the other thing. You know, it says nothing about that. God tells you to want to do one thing. Believe. Believe in what God tells you to believe in. The finished work of Jesus Christ. Trust in Him and Him alone. And what he did for you on the cross, and you'll be saved. It, there's nothing else you can do to it. You cannot make an add to it. It's a free gift. You receive it by faith. Anybody, everyone who tells you, they cannot, everybody out there, they just cannot accept that. They want to add either something in the beginning of the gospel or something in the end of the gospel. So, the fact is, is that man can't keep his hands off salvation. And, uh, and then Pastor Lawson's up there and saying, that's why our church is all messed up. No, the church is all messed up because people aren't being told how to live. It's not because they're not saved. You get a lot of saved people who are just in carnality. So we'll stop here and put this up. The gospel is very simple. It's faith alone. It has to be faith alone. Because faith is the only thing you can do that's non meritorious. The object of the faith gets all the gets all the glory, gets all the merit, because he's the one who did all the work. All you're doing is, is trusting in the object of faith. If you do anything else, you put anything else added to it, you've nullified it. Oh, I'm repenting of my sins. Oh, I'm asking. It's all a show. Oh, I'm asking God to save me. Oh, please this. Oh, Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea culpa. <laughs> it's all chunk. It's all chunk. Oh, you need to feel sorry for your sins. You need to be You don't know what the person feels. It doesn't matter. All that got them to the point is to believe. That's it. That's it. They're looking for this, you know. And then they say, well, he must have not been saved because he's leaving the church and he's not, he's doing this and he's involved in this. They got flesh. Most people are saved. Or a lot of people aren't saved because they just did what they told them to do. Repent of their sins. Or say a sinner's prayer. Or oh, this won't hurt you. <laughs> Guy gets right to the point of salvation. But, but you know, before you believe now, yeah, say a sinner's prayer. Say it to me now. I got this whole thing lined out. You know, God can't get the gospel right. You gotta get a uh, thing. I, I formulate this prayer for you. Here you go. This this prayer is a good one. The other bad, the other prayers are bad. But this is just a good one. <laughs> so, they don't trust God. Salvation is about God. It's not about us. When Philip went to the Ethiopian eunuch, all he did was show the scriptures. The, guy asked him, the Ethiopian eunuch asked him some questions. He said, yeah, that's, that's, that's speaking about the Lord. speaking 
uh, it's not it's not, it's not about prophets, but but the about the uh, Lord. And okay, I, I believe it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> who know? And you know he won't be, he's the one brought the issue of being baptized. He says he believed really hard. You see, yeah, he was fully persuaded. He's fully he's a believer. So we'll stop here and put this up. Amen. Thank you.